Hey folks, so in this week's video I thought I would demonstrate to you guys a little bit of how I often use the airbrush and honestly how I get most of my enjoyment out of using an airbrush and that is a little bit beyond Prime Zenithal base coat uh, which is you know a great starting point for the airbrush this really takes it to just one one level above it's not pushing the airbrush to the absolute limits of what it's capable of but it does take advantage of some of the things that an airbrush is capable of particularly regarding how to blend your colors together and get really nice uh, soft transition effects on the model and in this case i have been doing it on a commission piece this bad boy here techless and selenar um, and particularly it is Selenar's uh, coloring that I have filmed uh, for this video. So it's going to look at kind of the soft transitions that I get across the surfaces of the wings and the body. Um, this is not impossible for beginners, but it's maybe one step past complete beginner level. This is the kind of thing that I really recommend you giving a go once you're comfortable with the basics of airbrushing and you're wanting to test yourself a little bit more, maybe do a little bit more with your airbrush. You don't need a super top quality airbrush for this, but you do need a little bit of trigger control, good knowledge of pressure and paint dilution, those kinds of basics that are pretty straightforward for airbrushing and you'll learn very quickly. Um, hopefully you like this, it will show you kind of the steps that I tend to go through with my airbrushing, um, and I, I really do hope that you guys learn a little bit from it. I have already completed a Prime and Zenithal on this model, as I do with most of the models that I paint, as you'll know if you've seen a few of my other videos. It's my starting point regardless of what it is that I'm actually intending to do with the model. But for Selenar I wanted quite a warm feel to the creature. The kind of artwork in the example is uh, very uh, warm tones, oranges and browns. And I wanted to, to keep that feel to it. So I needed to address the fact that black and the black prime that provides the current shadows is a very cold set of colors. It's a blue base, blue based black. And I needed to kind of cut that uh, cool tone to it. To do this, I took some sepia ink. Uh, in this case, I'm using Liquitex ink. And I thinned it pretty heavily uh, and then used that as a uh, filter to, to filter all of the model. Now I didn't apply it evenly across all of the model, I did focus the application on the areas which are naturally shadowed to have more of a warming impact on them. I also did this in a few different passes, kind of letting the model dry in between those passes. Because I've thinned the ink pretty heavily just to be able to better control the application, if I went too fast, I'd end up spidering, I'd end up pooling on the model, uh, which is never a good idea with airbrushing. Fortunately, it's a reasonably large model, and I was able to kind of move back and forth across the various areas of the model and let them dry in between passes. As you can see, as I get further along, I've applied this in, in areas where there's highlights, areas where there's shadow. I'm not too worried about making it a completely even application across the model as long as I've really hit those shadows to warm up those shadows so that things don't feel cold in the recesses it's uh, it's achieved what I'm looking for having it in the uh, highlighted areas is not a problem because the next step as you can see is for me to go back in and re-establish those highlights as usual for me I'm using Liquitex white ink um, this is titanium white. Uh, this gives us a nice, strong, bold highlight. I applied it primarily on the underside of the wings, but also on 
the middle band of feathers on the top side of the wings and a little bit on the chest as well. Whenever it feels like the paint is a little bit wet but you want to move on to the next layer or the next coat or the next application, whatever it is, um, don't be afraid to crack out a hairdryer and just put a blast of the hairdryer on it. If the paint's really wet on the surface, if there's a decent amount of paint on the surface, applying a hairdryer can be a little bit difficult. I know people who will use a dehydrator. It's a very effective way of doing that without risking blowing the paint around. Uh, for myself, usually what I'll do is I'll just wait for most of the surface water to evaporate and then apply the hairdryer. Uh, maybe apply the hairdryer from a distance, kind of use my fingers as a bit of a baffle so that it's not quite such a direct application. Uh, maybe use it on a lower speed setting. If at all possible, it's really worthwhile getting a cheap, low quality hair, hair dryer because those are less powerful, they're not heating up quite so much, um, but they're sufficient to really do a good job on drying off models. So if you can find one of those super budget, cheap, you know, travel hair dryers, that's really the best thing for the hobby. Uh, the one that I have is honestly a little more powerful than I'd like. Uh, but it's it's what I have and so it's what I use With this application of white, I'm not looking to give a full pure white Coat to the model. I'm just wanting to re-establish those highlights. So if it's not a perfect white if there's still uh, Colors showing through that's absolutely fine uh, what I do want to try and do though is preserve the shadows where they exist, so I, I'm trying as much as possible not to lose those shadows in the process of re-establishing the highlights. If I do, it's not a big problem, you can always go back and forth and back and forth. One of the nice things with an airbrush is that the, the layers of paint that you're setting down with it are so thin that you can really just keep going back and forth with the paint and it shouldn't be a problem. So I actually switched to a more detailed airbrush here and <laughs> had forgotten to put the uh, needle back in the uh, proper position so I, I kind of got a blast of paint out the end that was a little bit of impatience on my, on my part really kind of showing out. But um, once I'd fixed that, I'm now taking what is in my mind the base coat for most of this model. Um, this is a nice warm brown color. It is Vallejo Model Air Wood Brown. I love using the Vallejo line for everything. Uh, the fact that Vallejo has a full set of paints that are both in regular and in air is makes life so much easier for someone like me that commission paints armies. I can switch between a pre-thinned air paint and a regular thickness model paint without having to worry about color matching, without having to worry about thinning the paint appropriately. I can just, you know, use them straight out of the pot in both instances, know that they'll match and know that they're going to do what I need them to do. And that's the case with this color in, as well. So I'm using this to set the, that mid-tone of the entire model. I've already established shadows and highlights. I'm going to tweak the highlight color as you'll see in a second, but for the rest of the model, this will take this will cover everything from that shadow up to our base coat, and then we'll deal with the highlights in the next step. My final color for this project is Vallejo Model Air White Ivory. This is a nice warm pale cream. Uh, it really works well over the white, it just very, very quickly establishes itself, warms up the hues of the model. Um, it is, it's a regular model paint, so it's opaque, uh, which means that if you do go too heavy with this, you are going to lose those shadows that we've established. But with careful application, you're going to get much the same effect that you have with your base coat, uh, but applied to the, the brighter areas. As you can see, I was looking to apply a color 
a, a paler color to the middle set of feathers on the wings to give a little bit of visual interest to roughly match what the box art has and I think it, it works pretty well for, for that effect. As always with the airbrush you'll see that the thing that I'm always moving to get the right angle is the model itself. This is a really important practice for any airbrusher to become very familiar with. If you are trying to move your airbrush around to hit the model at the right angle, you're going to have issues with paint spillage, um, you're going to mess up a lot more often. If you think of the airbrush as a fixed position, maybe moving around in slight circles, uh, but not tilting, not trying to re-angle it, it's going to give you much better results. Let the model do the hard work, let the model reposition itself because that doesn't have a load of free paint sitting in a hopper that's going to splash and spill everywhere if you're uh, overzealous in your movements. And there we have it. This entire process from start to end took a little over 10 minutes and really does kind of cover the full process that I often apply to my painting of monsters with you know different colors uh, but the ideas the modulation the establishment of light and shadow all of those things are exactly as they would be normally so there you have it that was the process that i went through to get the uh, base colors down for this commission. Hopefully it's interesting, it's useful to you guys. I would really recommend giving something like this a go. If you've got any kind of monster creatures, they are phenomenal for this kind of stuff. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a, a troll, a griffin, a dragon, any kind of larger creature that's gonna give you nice big volumes to work with, you can really go to town with those kinds of transitions. Give the belly a different color. Give the wings a different color. Maybe try and paint the membranes a different color to the uh, structure of wings. If you've got a, a winged creature like a dragon. All of this kind of stuff is, is really, really worth trying to take your painting, your airbrushing in particular, to the next level please do consider liking, subscribing, maybe throwing in a comment or two, hitting that bell for notifications of new videos. All of those things help me. They really encourage me to keep putting out these videos. It makes me know that there's a community out there that's watching them. And also, please consider checking out Herrick Games and Hobbies and Elric's Hobbies. Both of those are affiliates of mine. They are phenomenal companies that I've had a ton of pleasure working with both before and after becoming an affiliate with them. And it's the reason why I, I use them. And if you use the, the links and the codes in the description below, it also helps me out, which I would really appreciate. So as always, thank you for watching. Please give this a go if you've got an airbrush. If you don't, maybe consider getting one because it will help with your painting if you're wanting to get full armies done and the like. But in the meantime, later days.